Who doesn't want to be happier in life? Imagine if you had insights from someone who has been around some of the most successful people in the world and he saw trends, he saw patterns of happiness and what made people successful. Guess what? We've got him on the show today. His name is Stephen D'Angelo. He wrote the book, A Single Day of Peace. Stephen, we're glad you're here, man. We are going to pick your brain in the next nine and a half minutes. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me on the show and I look forward to the conversation. Stephen, talk to me about the book. How did it come about? What's the overall message? Yeah, you know, Suzanne, the overall message is is how can I help people live a more happy and successful life? That was really the intent. Um, it came about through my, my career in the business world where I have worked alongside many successful people. Uh, professional athletes, billionaires, successful business people, successful people that started schools, all walks of life, not just financially successful. Mm -hmm. And I observed that the people who were happy and successful did things differently than those people who were successful, but candidly not quite so happy. And very often people would say, well, how can you not be happy when you have a lot of success and, you know, assets and things of that nature? I'd say, well, you'd be surprised. So they don't go hand in hand. Yeah, uh, there are lots of people, unfortunately, that, you know, are not really happy people, grumpy, not positive, don't help others. And those that are happy, they did things differently. So I've documented those throughout the years and I wanted to write the book, but I didn't want it to be an instruction manual. So I came up with an idea to create a fictitious story, a compelling and attractive and interesting, maybe somewhat controversial story to tie all of these principles into it. So well, that's how it all came about. So it's more like a novel. It's a novel. Exactly right. I wrote a fictitious story. It's a novel. Um, it takes uh, the reader through someone's life who was very successful, um, has a very uh, negative thing happen in his life. He has to, he comes to a crossroads like we all do from time to time. He makes a decision to pursue life in the spirituality area. And he goes through some 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 very positive experiences, some challenges, and he ultimately documents 50 principles that if you follow them one a day or a single day of peace at a time, you'll live a more happy and successful life. So 50 secrets. 50 secrets. Did this change you personally? That's interesting. I, I will tell you that I have to say this. When I go back and read the book or I watch some of the the videos that I've done or interviews like this, I do indeed get inspired by the message. And um, it helped me, you know, think through all of these things that I saw successful and happy people do, and they went deeper inside of me. So I, I would say that, yeah, just from a, a self-satisfaction and an inspiration perspective, it really has. And then of course, the book has gotten pretty popular and I've had lots of conversations with people and the way that they've reacted to me as to how the book has touched them. There's a, there's a spirituality tone to it. There's a Christian tone to it, but I've had Buddhists read it. I had Protestants, I had a Jewish community read it. And the feedback they've given me was like, wow, this is what I think about when I think about my religion and I'm not so fulfilled with it uh, and how you talk about spirituality and these principles, you've really inspired me. So when I hear that, that of course is very, very positive. And I like, okay, this was worth the six years it took for me to write it. Yeah. All right. So I, I want to apply at least one of the principles and I don't want to be a spoiler or anything like that, but you do have 50. I think you can yeah. spare maybe <laughs> one, right? So if we take one of the 50 aspects and we go, People who have applied this value to their life, maybe it was forgiveness, maybe it was uh, joy. I don't know what what is the, what what is that one that jumps out to you that you go, this is step number one out of you yeah. got forty nine more you have to read yeah. about. But what, absolutely, what's that first and one? so the first thing I'd like to say is you know some people have said fifty, like you not five, not ten, and I said you know. <laughs> There's a lot of aspects of your life that if you're more conscious about, you will be more content, live that happy and successful life. But to answer your Well, question, we're complex people. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Actually, principle number one is the one I think that um, I'd like to share because I've seen this across all of those people that I said happy and successful. And this is one that some people really have a challenge with. And I try to do my best to inspire people to celebrate their difference. So very often people are like, well, I'm too short, I'm too tall, I'm too fat, I'm too skinny, I'm not smart enough, I didn't go to a great school, blah, 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 right? 
And what I observed with successful people is they recognize they can't be like the next woman or the next guy. They are who they are. You know, God created only one of me. There'll never be another one like me. And there are things that about me that I want to be able to exploit and to celebrate that I'm different and have and have that peace inside of me that I'm good who I am. Now, sure, we should always try to strive to improve ourselves. That's why we read books, why we do good things. But let's look at ourselves that we are wonderful, that we're a miracle and we can do great things. That's the first principle. And I think that is what Love more that. and more people need in order to have that positive self-esteem so they can go accomplish mm. the things that they they actually can accomplish that maybe they doubt. Nobody's going to be a better me than me. There you go. That's right. I love it. That's right. Stephen, have you always have you always been encouraging or or surrounding yourself around these successful, wonderful people? Did that change you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. Another principle in, in the book I call, say is what is your slant? And I ask people to look at, you know, wh what do they slant toward? And to answer your question, my slant has been in that optimism kind of thing. I, you know, upbringing, I know my mother was, was, was always encouraging me that, Hey, you could do whatever you want to do. Uh, you got to believe in yourself, those kinds of things. And I, and I had a cousin who recommended when I was in college, start reading self-help books. And I mm. didn't like reading very much, but mm -hmm. I started reading self-help books and, and really was helpful. So yeah, I, I have, I have been that way. And in my leadership as a business leader, as a mentor, as a consultant, I rely a lot on it. And I, I know the people around me feel that positive energy and that vibe, and it helps them achieve greater things than they thought they were able to achieve. The glass is half full with you. That's a great place it to is. start. It what is. do you hope for the future of the book? Where, where's it going? I would like the book, you know, to be literally read by, by millions, you know, and I, well, sure, there's an economic reason for that. But, you know, my I always say the, the book, the intention is to make the world a better place by helping people find their better place. And when you find your better place, what do you do? You tend to do good things for others. If you're grumpy and you're happy with yourself and things are going on, you don't tend to do things for others. But if you're feeling really good, you do more for others. That creates unity. And in this world that we live in today, there's lots of division, racial division, political division. We need to come together more. So in one small way, if I can help the world become a better place by helping people find their better place, I fulfilled the objective of the book. Mm. Stephen, you have a consulting business and it feels like this book has become an anchor for your consulting business. Would you, would you talk about how that's affected that? Yes. Um, it's very interesting. Um, it certainly is a conversation piece. I have, I do lots of work with Boston Consulting Group. Actually, they're, they're a global consulting firm. I'm an advisor to them and they bring me into some of their clients. And just the other day, we were on a call with a software company, a very large software company. The CEO is on the call and we introduced ourselves. He said to me, so you wrote a book? And I said, yes, I did. He goes, well, you know what? I could use one of those. I can use a single day of peace right about now. <laughs> so it's a conversational thing. But then I do get into what's the book all about. And it's an interesting thing, again, that when I get into the uh, the spiritual side of an individual and that can help you be successful, it's different. And they want to talk more about it because it is inside them and they just need somebody to open it up a little bit. Hmm. We're, we're kind of wrapping up here, but how do we begin to undo the the years of stuff that we've created how do we say okay today's day one from me being a new person <laughs> if you could give us that magic pill in 20 seconds that'd be great Stephen. well I, I think it's a conscious decision that you want to make an adjustment a book like mine there's many of them but if you read my book and you take it one day at a time read each principle one principle per day and work on that each day that's how you get transformation Stephen, share real quick about your publishing company that that's uh, representing you Yes, Karis Publishing. I'm very thankful that they trusted my message and believed in it, and they published it for me. It could be you could purchase it on Amazon. Uh, you can go to my website, A Single Day of Peace, and you can order it through my website. You'll learn more about me. Uh, but my publisher has been very, very uh, has been they've been fantastic, very supportive, and I'm thankful for them. Stephen, you're wonderful. Have a great day. Have a single day of peace. Well, thank you. Same to you. Have a lifetime <laughs> of peace. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you.